Hello, I have Deputy Chief Brent Penner with the Lake Country Fire Department joining me now. Welcome, Brent. Uh, how are you doing there today? Good. Should I say Chief? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about the Lake Country Fire Department. Yeah, Lake Country Fire Department, um, uh, basically, we're a composite hall, which means we have full-time members and we also have uh, paid-on-call members. So. Uh, basically the backbone of our fire department uh, is members of the community. They're, they're you know, basic teachers and uh, construction workers and everyone that, ha that has uh, a full-time employment elsewhere. Some people work at home as well as we have during the daytime, we have seven, uh, seven individuals that are full-time with the, with the department. So we have two chief officers, two maintenance staff, uh, two inspectors, fire inspectors, and one person who's um, uh, an administrative uh, specialist. Basically, um, we have three different fire stations in Lake Country. So we have uh, uh, in Winfield, so that's where most people kind of travel through. We kind of are, we're the, the area between Kelowna and Vernon. So, so basically all that real estate in between there is divided between Cars Landing, Oyama, um, yeah, Okanagan Center and Winfield and for that area we have three different fire stations that cover that area and uh, each station is that same kind of environment that paid on call environment. Great um, and I know that uh, fire departments do a lot in the community so in addition to everything we expect about serving the community in an emergency um, can you tell me about other ways that your fire department gives back? Yeah, well, there's, um, you know, with COVID-19, it's a little bit different this year. So we're trying to find different um, different ways to address some of the things that we've been involved with. But on a typical year, we go through the schools and we, we, we teach every single uh, grade three student in Lake Country. So everyone gets this uh, type of training of safety, awareness, and fire education. What to do really in the middle of the night if the smoke alarm is going off in your house and and uh, that's probably not me burning dinner at two o'clock in the morning. It's, it's, it's probably, there's probably a reason for that. Um, we're all community members. We all, a lot of us have families. And of course we want everyone to be uh, out of the house safely before, before we arrive. Uh, so if, if people aren't, uh, that's our, our, our main mandate to go in there and, and to rescue people. But uh, of course we wanna make sure if everyone can be out, it makes our job a lot easier. So, so we, we, we go into the schools and we teach the, those kind of programs. We're involved with, um, you know, uh, Lake Country is a large uh, a children's festival. So we'll go in there and, and uh, teach some things like uh, everyone knows about stop, drop and roll and different kind of things like, uh, like that. And we'll just kind of engage with, with the kids and have some fun. Um, also, we, we like to look at a lot of the, um, uh, a lot of the restaurants and, uh, and um, different businesses that within our community will have um, uh, kind of days that they'll donate uh, part of their proceeds to, you know, different charities. So we do get involved in, in that as well. Um, basically, at the end of the day, um, um, our members do volunteer their time for those types of programs. But when it comes to things like um, going on a structure fire, going on a wildfire, uh, um, marine rescue, we have a marine rescue zodiac in our Oyama Hall. Um, things where we're, we're actively involved in the emergency and a pager on your hip goes off, those are the kind of events that they're actually paid for. So they're also paid for training. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of extra work just to become a member of our hall. There's going to be more than three hour, or 300 hours of training that just gives you your uh, bare bones, safe in the workplace kind of uh, ability to respond on, on a fire truck type uh, training. So uh, there's a lot of dedication that's, that, that our members uh, um, are involved with. So it's training, response, and then the community. So there's, there's several aspects to, to our position. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, are you currently recruiting for new members? We have normally 60 members through our three halls. Um, fortunately, two of those halls are full right now, but attrition is always changing. So, so typically every year we do recruit for all three of our halls. 
this particular year, we're fortunate uh, that um, two of them are, are full, but we are still looking and, and recruiting for Oyama Station, which is kind of one of the more interesting stations in our district because not only are they going to your typical grass fires and wildfires and structure fires and of course medical calls, anything that's life-threatening, uh, we do get involved with as well on the medical side of things. But they also patrol, they have a, a, a Marine Rescue Zodiac that services uh, Kalamalka Lake and Wood Lake. It's also on a trailer, so um, um, Ellison or, or Duck Lake uh, towards Kelowna Airport, uh, they're also involved with launching for that if there's any uh, rescues. Uh, uh, as well as Marine Rescue, on the other side of things, if it's not the middle of summer on a, you know, blustery, uh, stormy, 30 degree, uh, um, you know, storm that's kind of blown through town. Um, in the middle of winter, in the middle of January, they also do ice rescues. So they work on both sides of that. Absolutely. Um, so what is your uh, recruitment timeline? Um, when do you start your like intake and training? Yeah, it can start at any time. The two times that we usually do one recruitment a year, because there's a lot of time and effort that's uh, placed into that. However, Right now in September is usually when we're starting to kick things off and we have our, our people in place and by October 1st we're usually uh, usually training. Um, the other time would be uh, January, so sometimes we'll start things off in January uh, depending on what our numbers are and, and what our needs are. Um, this year with COVID um, it's likely going to be the majority of it starting in January. There, we might have our people selected prior to, so probably in October or what have you, but but we'll probably, uh, we need to actually kind of see how this is going to play out. We have COVID plans like every business uh, uh, throughout British Columbia right now, and uh, uh, we want to keep our people safe, um, but we also have a responsibility to the public to ensure that uh, that we uh, have the people to respond when they have a need. So right now we're in a pretty good position so we're just slowing things down a little bit and and making sure that you know um, we're doing things responsibly and um, you know we're all hoping I'm sure everyone is is that uh, that the second wave uh, um, of this uh, uh, sickness and disease doesn't uh, uh, impact uh, everyone in the province and if it if it uh, if it stays where it is we'll continue with our recruit process okay. Yeah. Um, do your, uh, out, like the people coming that you're recruiting, do they need to come with any uh, skills and qualifications already? It, does that help them get onboarded faster or? It can, yeah. Um, we do have several people that um, will come in with professional training. So they'll have, they'll have the same level of training as if you were in the uh, working full time in the valley for West Kelowna Fire or Kelowna Fire, Penticton, Vernon, Vancouver, Edmonton, Toronto. You know, it, you know, it, it's the same level of training. It's a uh, third party accredited uh, um, firefighter two type training, and if they come with that that uh, training, which we call in our province full service training, then there's an abbreviated program to integrate them into our team, right? But if um, for the vast majority of the people, it's more about uh, getting the right community members to our department. It's always, it's always about the people. And then once we have the people, we will provide the training and we'll do that at our expense. And what we expect is that after the training is completed and you know, they, the, the people that are involved do dedicate a lot of time and effort into that. But once that's done, you know, we're hoping that you're going to stick around with us for a few years and, uh, and service our community. So it's, it's really about the people at the, at the end of the day. And, uh, and if a person doesn't have any background on it, um, you know, that's, that's not an issue for us. Right. My next question was um, about the training, which you've kind of answered in a, in a few different questions. Um, I'm just... I think you mentioned was it 300 hours of training that uh... approximately yeah yeah so it is divided into three different pieces so it can get diving into it a little bit more as you know if you were um, if you were a protect uh, a candidate for our department and your your application was accepted 
what we would generally do is enroll you into a third party, uh, you know, post-secondary course, which would be through the Justice Institute of BC. And then we have the trainers and the evaluators right here locally. And that is divided into probably the biggest part of things is the exterior firefighting, learning how we do, do what we do and the communication processes and keeping safe and learning about the equipment and, and everything that you do, you know, even before you get into a fire, you know, we're talking on the exterior of it. So that exterior side of things is probably one of the biggest pieces of the pie. And then once, we, once we're complete there, we'll, we'll roll you into what we call interior firefighting. And that's where you get your first experience with, you know, search and rescue for, you know, people in a home uh, for a, you know, single family dwelling type fire. And, um, you know, what kind, of, um, what kind of tactics that you can utilize and learning about fire behavior and, and things like that. So as we kind of move through that and experience that, the last piece of uh, the process would be the full service part, which we kind of get into how you, how you anticipate things in advance. Uh, some of the more uh, higher, the higher skill sets like big commercial buildings, pre-planning, fire cause and origin and, and things like that. And not that we make anyone an expert in those areas, but we, we definitely bridge the topics so that you're, you're part of the, part of the, the process. We do have specialists when it comes to fire cause and origin, but, but uh, it's important that the entire team knows what each other does. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, do you have regular training nights? Is it the same night at each hall or do you have different nights that they do? Well, that's, that's a good question. Normally I'd say once um, with, the, with, the, with the recruit training, they, uh, they would be dedicated to a Monday night, say perhaps a Wednesday night, and then one day in the weekend, let's say a Saturday. So that goes for a period of time until we achieve our objectives. And then usually once we get to interior firefighting being complete, we take a breather, take a break, we experience some on the job activity and give them a pager. And then re we reconvene and hit some of those bigger to uh, topics. Um, but once you're complete that, that's where um, it would normally be like a Monday night. So you'd come in for your maintenance training and come in on a Monday evening and meet with your training officer and he'd set you up into companies and, and, and those individuals would then uh, target a certain topic and, and it's about keeping your skills fresh, number one. And sometimes we introduce new things uh, um, to, your, uh, to, to your skill set, right? Um, that's not the way it is this year. Um, right now, I have uh, eight different training uh, situations going on a week. Um, and it's because we're dealing with small groups, small, you know, no big integrations of, of people and a whole bunch of apparatus and the big teamwork and working together stuff right now is, 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 is a no-go unless it's an emergency operation, right? So right now it's small groups of six. Uh, it's a challenging <laughs> for you. <laughs> it's a little interesting. Yeah, we're all we're all finding ways to 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 you know protect our people, of course, and uh, and uh, just to be able to if something does happen, be able to trace things properly so we can kind of keep everyone safe, right? So. Right. Um, so we talked about the number of hours in the training, and uh, is there a minimum commitment once you're on board and you have you know, you're going to the regular training nights uh, whatever your small group might be but is there a a level of commitment that you require on the the call outs let's say um you know if you miss a certain number without you know you might let, people might let you know they're not in town or whatever but other than that is there sort of an expectation on that commitment yeah so uh, that's a good question um there is a number that that we attempt to achieve as far as training nights but i'll just say that generally speaking if you join the department you're expected to be there for your training night so so i'd say 100 percent. now at the same time even more important than training is your family life so if you want to go on a vacation and go camping or what have you perfectly okay but you have to have a reason not to, not to come right so uh we also target shift workers a lot of the time well if your employer says you got to be working, then then we're going to have to work with that. 
Um, to give you a, a real number is, is we, we do target people to say that we expect you to be there um, no less than 70% of the time. And if you're gonna be there less than 70% of the time, it's time to talk to your employer and see if you can, or, or some of your people and see if you do some shift swapping. But um, if you don't have a reason, we'd like you to be there every week. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so someone wanted to join the fire department. What's the first step they need to take? How do they get in touch with you? Oh, geez. Uh, yeah, another good question. Um, uh, nowadays with the websites, you can just, you know, log in to lakecountry.bc.ca and uh, go through the uh, different departments until you find fire and, and take a look at our website and kind of look around and, and uh, you'll not only will you find information there, but you will find an application there. So um, if you fill out that application, it's something that can, that will just email right on over to us. And when we do have a um, a recruitment session that is uh, is being planned for. We'll take out all those applications and get in contact with everyone. So, um, obviously, right now we're looking at the OEM area, and we, the timelines are are a little bit different this year. But um, you, you know, from week to week, you know, you could be you could have a full station in say Winfield for you know for eleven months, and then you have three people leave and all of a sudden you have three opportunities right so it's always changing right is there anything else you'd like to let us know <laughs> oh um no i just uh, thank you very much for asking some questions about us uh, this is this would be how we um uh, another way that we can kind of reach out to people and and obviously we are looking for people all the time that uh, want to be a part of their community and and help and you know it's not just about uh you know, um, the fire trucks is, is about our, 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 our families and our kids and, and a lot of the other things that uh, happen in our community. So yeah, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chief. Uh, enjoy your day. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.